We're now going to look at the concept of the inverse of a matrix and how to find the inverse of a matrix. Now, if we look at the product of these two matrices and we multiply them out with straightforward matrix multiplication, you will see that you will get minus 7 plus 8, which is 1. This row type in this column, it's 2 minus 2, which is 0, 0, and 1. So we multiplied two matrices and we got the identity matrix. Now, if you think of real numbers, there's a concept like that for real numbers. If I take a certain number, for example, 5, and I can, I can always find another number to multiply with it to get to the number 1. All right. So in real numbers, the concept of a multiplicative inverse exists, but only if I've got a non-zero number. But any non-zero number, I can find another num integer or another number, re any real number, that if I multiply the two, I get 1, which is my multiplicative identity. Now, similarly for matrices, we can find matrices that I multiply and I get the identity. So that gets us to the idea of invertibility. We say our matrix A is invertible. We sometimes use the word non-singular. But if A is an n by n matrix, so it has to be a square matrix, if there exists another matrix B such that, just take a look at that, A times B is equal to B times A is equal to the identity matrix, then A is invertible. And for this example, you will see that 7, 2, 4, 1, if I swap the order, minus 1, 2, 4, minus 7, I also get the identity matrix. And you can do that multiplication to check. Now, just remember that matrix multiplication is not necessarily commutative. So A, B, and B, A are not necessarily equal in general. So matrix multiplication is not necessarily commutative, but in this special case, we've got the inverse coming out. So if I can find this matrix B, then I say A is invertible. So that's where I start. If I can find something to multiply with A to get to the identity, if I multiply on both sides, A is then invertible. So then our next point is that if I can find this matrix B for which this is true, then B is unique, meaning there's only one of them. Now, we're not going to prove these, but these can be proven. So what we are saying is, if I can find that, it is only one specific number, uh, matrix. There's no other matrices. That one will be the unique, the only one that has that property. So let's go back to numbers, because you're more familiar with numbers. If I look at 5, there's only one number to multiply with 5 to get 1. It's a unique multiplicative inverse. So the same holds for matrices, that number B, matrix B, is unique. And we call that B the inverse of A. So B is then A inverse, and we write it A inverse like that. So that's the inverse matrix. If I can find that matrix, so I can multiply it with A. So A times A inverse gives me the identity. Similarly, A inverse times A. So that's the inverse matrix matrix. That's what it looks like. Okay, we'll get to how to find it, but that's how we def define it. All right, now a very interesting conclusion, which we can't prove with the tools we currently have. We need some elementary matrices and some more information, but the matrix A is invertible if and only if the determinant of A is non-zero. Now you need to look at determinants and make sure you know what determinants are. So before you look at this, make sure you're happy with determinants. But if I've got a matrix, I can conclude that it's invertible if I see the determinant is non-zero. So if the determinant is zero, then I will not be able to find the inverse of the matrix. So that's an important property to be aware of. All right, now if I've got a two by two matrix, finding the inverse, there's a nice shortcut. I will go through the process eventually, but just for a two by two, let's just look at the shortcut because it's quite easy to use. If I've got a two by two matrix and I've got the determinant value K, then the inverse of that matrix is 1 over k times. So what is happening here? I swap the places of A and D in my original matrix. And I change the sign of C and D. That's how I get my inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. So if we look at back to the example we started with, 
if that is our matrix A, then A inverse is equal to 1 over the determinant of A. Well, what's this determinant? 7 minus 8, so it's minus 1. So it's 1 over minus 1 times. What do we do? We swap these two, and we change the signs of these two. So if I multiply that minus 1 in, that is 7, 2, 4, 1. And that is what we started with, 7, 2, 4, 1. I'm just going to go back to that one. 7, 2, 4, 1, I multiplied with minus 1, 2, 4, minus 7 to get to the identity. So this is the shortcut for 2 by 2 matrices. Now to find the inverse of a 3 by 3 matrix or anything bigger, these two processes to follow. The one is using what was called the adjoint. It is seemingly a shortcut, but it's very tedious in calculation. So I'm not going to look at using the adjoint, but I am going to look at the other method. All right, so let's look at another property before we find the matrices. We're going to look at some more properties, and then we'll look at how to find the inverse matrices. So if I've got two invertible matrices of the same size, then the product is also invertible. Now we know the inverse is unique, so what will that product look like? It will look like this, the inverse of the product. So that's interesting in that it looks like the order is swapping around. But let's just take a look at... We're not proving this, we're just taking a quick look. If I multiply AB with this thing, B inverse, A inverse, if it's the inverse, it should give me the identity. Well, if we look at the associative property of matrix multiplication, we can rewrite that as such. Then, if we look at the property of inverses, that's just the identity matrix. And if I multiply anything with the identity, I just get the matrix back. And the property of inverses gives me that as the identity. So we see why it makes sense that the order swaps around. So important property, if I look for the inverse of the product of two matrices, that is what the inverse is. All right. More theorem linked to in inverses. If A is an n by n invertible matrix, and we're also not proving it, but we must be aware of all these things. Firstly, if A is invertible, then A inverse is also invertible. And your common sense would tell you, or you, you would think it makes sense that the inverse of the inverse gives me the original matrix, and that is true. For any integer k, A to the power k is invertible, and this is how we find the inverse of A to the power k. Then if I look at a scalar, scalar multiple of A, Scalar multiple is also invertible, and this is how I find the inverse of the scalar multiple. And then A transpose is also invertible, and this is how I find the inverse of A transposed. All right, so let's look at the process we're going to follow to find the inverse of a matrix. Now, we said there's a shortcut for 2 by 2 matrices. We know what this matrix inverse looks like, but we're going to use Gaussian elimination. So what we do, and this works for 2 by 2, 3 by 3, any size, and it's a simple process if you're happy with Gaussian elimination. So we take the, the given matrix, and we augment it with the identity matrix. We do Gaussian elimination on that until on my left-hand side I've got the identity matrix. Then we say whatever is on the right-hand side is my inverse. Now, we already know what this matrix's inverse looks like. So let's see how it works out for this matrix. So let's get started. Our first step, I want a leading one. So I'm taking row 1 and I'm multiplying it by minus 1. So I've got 1, minus 2, minus 1, 0. Row 2 stays the same. 4, minus 7, 0, 1. And I'm assuming that you understand Gaussian elimination, else go back and look at that. Then my next step, I need a zero underneath this leading one. So I take row two and I add minus four times row one to it. And row one stays the same. Row two then becomes zero minus four times row one. So I get a one here. That's nice. Zero minus four, that gives me a four. One minus zero is one. All right. So I've got my next leading one is already there, so that's nice. So now I need a zero above it, so I'm taking row one and adding two times row two to it. Row two stays the same, and row one is then one, zero, 
minus 1 plus 8 is then 7, and 0 plus 2 is 2. So what we're saying is then A inverse is whatever's on the right-hand side. Because on the left-hand side, I now have the identity matrix. So on the right-hand side, we have A inverse. So that is the process we're going to follow to find the inverse of a square matrix. Now, it must be invertible because else you're not going to find that it won't reduce to the identity. And you can check that with checking the determinant. Now, yet again, a two by two matrix, there's a shortcut. You can use it. But as soon as the matrices gets bigger, you'll have to use Gaussian elimination to get to that inverse matrix. In the another video, we're going to look at how to use the inverse matrix to solve systems of linear equations.